Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm your host today. I am Buaggy. And I'm Egil, who will be accompanying him. Oh yes. So today we are here for another of these excellent reading comments video and today we are going to attempt for the first time to let Egil read a comment. Hence the glasses, okay. So there's your comments. Thomas Dale. Yes. Yay for Two Minute Monday. And what's that say? You've got to read it louder so they can hear it. The Starns. Yeah, that's the Starns. Thanks again for your dedication. Hail Pernelia. Yeah, that's the uh, one of our ladies who, who um, leaves comments. And we have the Belfast Viking, Martin Brown. Hello, Martin. Hello, Martin. This Carl. I hope he's playing around there's with more. There's more to it. I have this problem with the cost of swords. Beginning of the Viking Age, they would have been expensive. Yes. But I've been reading around the internet some history magazine and watching old and new history programs and swords turn up in the middle and late viking age because of the raids and battles as more swords were taken from the dead or needed re uh, rearming new armies they became cheaper so the start of cost by car by the end of the few months wages the same armor they started to have what we today would call production lines of people making the different parts and bringing them together at the end. I think the Germans built the best sword blades and the Italians' armour. Hmm. Let's think this one through. At the beginning of the Viking Age, there were quick smash and grab raids. As time progresses, they were paid to stay away. And eventually they just turned up, pay us, and off they went. So money's coming in. The cost of the swords, well, I think that would have stayed pretty expensive. And you see, taking swords from the dead, that is one reason I think you'll find. If you look at the hoard in Dublin, they're bent. It's supposed to be killing the weapon. It's, it's to sacrifice the weapon after it, isn't it? Yeah, but it also means you can't use it. Yes. Uh, and there must have been cases of people nipping out and getting them. But that's the same in Scandinavia as well. And then you talk uh, about the German blades, the Rhenish blades, and yeah, they were the best, and they stamped them with a running wall. Oh. It was the first acknowledged trademark, as far as we so know. When was that, then? Probably about 9th, 10th century. Really? Yeah. Well, amazing, that. But you also got people who would do it. It's sort of like the fake Rolex of today. Well, we don't think about in those days, you put in a brand on your product, do yeah. we? And that's a brand. Yeah. Yeah. So... That's only a brief... Um, what about English blades? I always thought English blades were very high, good quality steel. Depends on your blacksmith. Well, some, of course it does. They did analyse some steel from the Viking Age, and they never surpassed it until about late Victorian times. Oh, yes. Yet again, another great comment. Thank you, Martin. But, but then again, there is an example in the sagas, two Vikings fighting with a sword had to stop and straighten their blades out. Yes. Right, and Sven... Sven. Excellent video. Thank you very much there, Sven. Always good to have it. And Pernilla Gustafsson, I'm first to give an upvote and comment. Ha ha. Yes. Thank you for that. I will reply to these later on. Do I just slide my finger up? Yeah, you just slide along like this. I was not used to a tablet, folks. To me, a tablet is something you take with a glass of that's, water. That's what my dad says. Mm. And Vakling Necklace of Egil Thorson. This is from Jody Hackler Risto. Yes, there's a new commenter on the video, so hello and welcome. Welcome to this thing. Gives me some ideas to add to my husband's necklace too. Well, we'd like to inspire you. Yes. From the same lady again. Thank you for the nice brief meanings. I was looking at making a longer, more involved uh, for my tunic dress. Well, you're very welcome, and I will reply later to say hello. Right, now we've got Dane Axes, a cut above the rest. That's a video from last year. And that's, Mag uh, that's Magnarox. Magnarox. Uh, it's another new commenter, so hello and welcome. It's too short for a line weapon. The shaft should be at least two metres long to be effective in a line. Ah, I take issue with there because... Two um, metres is too long. When I was uh, fighting in York, there was a woman uh, who had an axe, normal length that we had. Look there, Dana. She was using was the shield wall as a shield. And she just went forward, bopping people. So it depends on the technique. Two metres, that's six foot. 
That's as tall as, well, it's taller than you, me. Yeah, well, you need to be quite tall for a two metre shaft. I'm using a Dane axe to take special care. But you also don't account for how much of the, of the shaft is poking out the back end of the uh, axe. Yeah. Okay, moving along. Folk chat, folklore, thirsty and builder theme. Oh, yes, that was last Friday's video. Another one from Martin Brown from Belfast. Hi there. Was there not a ghost story of Roman soldiers marching along a path, but the legs were a few feet under the ground because of the difference in ground height? Werewolves, werewolves, and I did say werewolves. Oh, and if you have a bit more time, werewolves, I would blame someone from Belfast for texting a load of rubbish. Okay, Martin. Well, yeah, in York, there were allegedly seen hordes of Roman soldiers marching along cut off at the legs because the ground level was different. So is that true then? It does happen. This is why you see people say, see ghosts with no legs or head. Yes. Because they're living in the existence where they were. Time's moved on, but not for them. I'm not sure if I told a story in that video of my old foreman when he used to live in Chester Green. And one morning at five o'clock he woke up and he looked outside and there was a Roman soldier walking across the bottom of his garden, going mm. through the walls. Yeah. And his house is exactly where the old Roman fort was. Oh. And, of course, there's the other story, just out the A6, just past um, Alice Street. There's been a few accounts of a Roman soldier being seen walking across the road there too. Mm. It's about a mile away from here. Well, Little Chester was the uh, Roman settlement, but at Chatterston, that was where the race course was. But in the 1990s, me and my friend James used to go out in the evening and I used to dress up in my Civil War costume and walk across the road in front of cars to make them think they saw a ghost. <laughs> the things he used to do when he was a teenager. OK, right, moving along now. Well, we've got one from Tangerine Layla. All right, Tangerine. Hello, Tangerine. Uh, nice to see hear from you again. Yes, we've got to film that intro video. Yeah. Uh, the Sleepy Oracle Folklore. This was interesting. I learned so much from you both. Didn't know about the origin of slaves and the tale of not looking back when he made the road. Oh, yes. It made me think. Devil's ditch. You have backed up. Thank you. Have a fabulous weekend. And the same goes for you, Tanji. Um, uh, I saw a video of her, one of her stories, very well told. Oh, yes. We've all got to make an intro for that and edit together. Yeah. And... Keep in contact, Angie. We need always, to do that. Today, always really. lovely to hear from oh, you. Oh, yes. Right, OK, moving along. Go along like that. And the you... bear hunt story. Oh. Ooh, an Italian tale. Lovely. And that was from... That's from my brother, Irick Rickardson. Yeah, right. So, hello there, Irick. Well, I'm glad you like that. He's, uh, he wants to do some content for us. Oh, another one from Martin Brown. And we're always glad to hear from you, Martin. Uh, you need a good pointy bear spear like mine, and they don't like it up them, you know. They just don't like it up them. Don't like it up them? It does. Apparently, Anna, there's a guy from America who's saying how delicious bear is to eat. Well, I think both Martin and, and Cultic God have talked about bear. We'll have to get you back on Cultic God's channel again. Well, also... Um, I enjoyed the, that. Uh, Tracy here. Um, now, Tracy is another new commenter and a new subscriber on the channel. Nice to hear from so you, Tracy. hello and welcome. She says, I wouldn't hunt bears, lol. It's really hot here to stay. Groovy. Yeah, well, groovy too, baby. Yeah. Favourite word. And the guy I was talking about who ate bears didn't actually do it by choice. They were trying to kill him at the time. It cult it. I, I forget now. I remember I had a live chat with him. Yeah, that was cult it. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. It's, I think you've got to be a brave person uh, to mix it with a bear. Yes. So, and we have Thomas Dale. Have you seen The Revenant film? Yeah, I did, yeah. actually. Uh, it took me a while to find out what a Revenant was. But what is a Revenant? Who comes from the dead. Oh, right. There you go. Thomas Dale, yay for or right, <laughs> Something. Ah. Here we go, another one from Tom Dale. Oh, yes. The Italio Gallavino collection of folktales sounds interesting. I'll have a look out for that. Yes. Yeah, they are interesting. There's um, a good few of them. And uh, now we've got one from Weird Size. It's another new commenter. I'm yeah. not sure whether you subscribe to us, but please do so. They're English. Uh, may I ask which part of the UK do you live? Well, we live in Derbyshire. 
Yes. Uh, which is referred to commonly as the Midlands. I'm assuming you're from abroad. No, they're English. Oh, they're English. All right. Well, it's the Midlands. They're a YouTuber. All right. And again, from a weird side, I like your hats. Where do you get them from? This is the guy to ask. Yeah, I'll make them mostly. Right. Um, here we have a couple of comments about the Elder Futhark. Oh, yes. Thomas Dale, yippee for Rune Wednesday. Hashtag Rune Wednesday. Good lad. And we have Vegan Dolls. Hello, my northern brother. Very cool video. Thank you very much for yes, that. Yes, hello to our northern friends. I'd like to hear from uh, fellow Runecasters, um, as it's always good to hear from you. Reaction video. Tangerine Layla. All right, Tange. Ha, ha, ha. You're, oh, oh, my God, you're both so funny. Much love. And back at you, baby. Oh, yes. We're going to please. Yeah. Who knows? One day you may come and visit England. Oh, yes. We don't intend to be funny, do we? Uh, sometimes. Cinderella, fairy tale in English. This is from Tangerine and uh, Layla again. Oh, this was so lovely and beautiful. Sigh. Various uh, purple hearts and things. Someday my prince will come. Better hurry. Babe? Okay. I've got to find that one. Reaction video, Sharma, six days ago. Yes, I got to reply to Sharma. Okay, Sharma. Australia. Oh, yeah. Glad Thank to you see day, you following your own advice. If you're getting bullied, tell someone, smiley faces. You have a great channel, in, and it's healthy if you can have a laugh at yourself sometimes. Oh, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it is. And I hate bullying. I, I do as well. I won't stand for it. No. Uh, so, yeah, stand up against it. Let's them. eradicate bullying in yeah. the 21st century, folks. Um, Gorgon. <laughs> yes, Gorgon Zola. Great name. This is an interesting comment, not aimed at us, but main, aimed at Savage. Mm. Just read it. So you the think. problem with YouTube is it encourages people to talk crap. Savage obviously doesn't have any problems being affected. Best not to follow his example. And no, it wasn't funny. Just stupid. Moral of the story: If you're going to use YouTube, don't end up being a degenerate. That's true. Yes. I mean, but no, that wasn't aimed at all. I think that was aimed more at Savage and their degenerate content they did that day, oh. which was a little bit pointless from my point of view. Oh well. But hey, we had fun, didn't we? Yeah. What's all about? And we've got one from Thomas Dale again. Hello, Thomas. Hi, Tom. Had to giggle at the unimpressed way Egil took up a sip of tea while Savage was savaging things. It was funny. Again, Thomas. Tom. Laugh out loud, bury the dog in Doggerland. Oh, Savage. Bury the dog in Doggerland! Oh, Savage Review by Egil would be fun. <laughs> and we've got Celtic God. Nice to hear from you. Hello. I love the close captions. I am Miguel and I, I am Bloggy. bloggy. That the closed captions, they're automated. So if we don't go and alter them to be correct, we'll come up with weird names. So in this case, we came up as. Miguel and Bloggy. All so right. you're now called Miguel. Ah, si, si, senor. Yeah, ciao, ciao, um, bella. Here's one from Sven, and it says, excellent video, guys. Thank you. And Cinderella of Fairytale in English. Dragula. Good day, and fellow, good day, fellow pagans. Dragula. And to you too. Eric Ricardson. Very beautifully told, my brother. You're Thank welcome. You. And uh, Thomas Dale, a Swiss version of Cinderella. Ooh, and it's on Friday. On hashtag Has Fairy Tales yeah. Tuesday. It's another new thing we're doing. We'll try and put that on the board. It'll come Tuesday. And here we have Shimana. And hello, Egil and Braggy. I have a question for hashtag Ask Egil Anything. A favourite pastime of mine is camping. So I've been curious about how people in the past carried water. Well, don't answer that question. I'll collect it for a uh, Ask Egg, Egg or Anything episode. Okay. And what do they cook in? Did they use clay pots or uh, iron pots used? Was there a difference when you go back further in time prior to the Viking Age? Was tin used to make containers for cooking and transporting water? Thank That's a good question. Regards, Sharma. Now... They did have uh, some ceramics. Uh, Torsky ware is one. Uh, soapstone was a favourite because you carved it. It's very soft. Uh, one of the things for transporting water was birch bark. You cut a outer ring of bark from a birch tree. You could sew it and it would carry water. In fact, you could boil water in it. So that's one thing. Uh, 
and fat roosters and Italian stuff. Ah, oh, Tony Rain. All right, all right, Tange. I have a question for Eniel. Was it university, York University in Toronto, Canada that you went to? My mum went there in the 80s, and I went there with her at night in the summertime. So even though I was a kid, I technically went to York University too. I wonder if Eggill knew my mum. I thought he looked familiar. Hugs to you both. I was in York in England, um, the, the University of York. We were, I was there actually about the same time your mum was. Uh, but this is the English one. Uh, I'm very honoured that there is another York in Canada. I wish I'd gone now. There's a New York in America. Yeah. And there you go. But having said that, uh, if you ever come over to England, drop in at York. You'll love it. And, uh, hey, contact us. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hey, um, we'll give you a tour. Yeah, well, we're 100 miles from York, but we will um, sort things out. Hang on. We've got another one. I, 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 I jumped ahead there. Because uh, I wanted you to read that comment. Which one? The one you just read. So, you're now on to this one now. Oh, hey up. Where are we? That one. Bear with him. Right. Okay, Tangiers, I've got a comment here. Ha ha, you're so much fun in education. We read that one. Just right, well, it's all right. <laughs> yeah. Worthy comments are worth reading twice. Well, hearts, funny thing, and a purple heart. Plain hands, that is. Oh, right. Yeah. I can't yeah, find no. that in the emoji thing. Oh, well. Always glad to hear from you and see, for, see you. Loved your story when you told it. Yes, well, I've got to film that intro and then get it out in round about 12 subs time, because we're now at 788, Eggle. Right, which one am I going for next? Um, we'll do this one next. What, that? Yeah. And that's from Belfast Martin Brown. Same as uh, Belfast. Belfast, the means mouth of the far set, which is the river Belfast sits on at the mouth of far set. Far set, yeah. yeah. Belfast. So it's interesting that. Yeah, that was. I didn't know that. Oh well, you've answered that there. Well, I know. I always try to answer them, but uh, I didn't know that. So okay. I think for now we're going to round this video up because we're slowly running out of time for this video. He's almost comatized with my misreading. No, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the most easiest thing actually reading because first of all you got words you, you know you, you're just coming across there and then you got to pronounce and then secondly mm. people choose names it's not always easy to pronounce so you know well anyway thank you to everybody well, for your we, comments we always enjoy these videos yeah. don't we and it's nice to hear from you tanji oh yes and uh we'll hopefully get back to you soon yes so please 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 <laughs> leave your comments of course bleep, bleep, and we'll get back to you in the future. Oh, oh yes. Give it a thumbs up. Woof woof. Bye. Bye.